Mr. Speaker, uh, Minister, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to take part in welcoming you to this conference and to share some of the Nordic experience in working with culture in the context of uh, diplomacy. First of all, uh, I would like to thank Morgan Slyketov, Speaker of the Danish Parliament, for inviting us to Folketinget and hosting this conference. It's indeed a wonderful venue and very inspiring venue for the, uh, such a discussion. Also, I would like to thank the organizers, uh, the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy and the, the Baltic Development Forum for putting uh, together a very interesting uh, and topical program. And last but not least, I'm pleased to see participants from uh, uh, near and far, even as far as from Nepal, I've heard. As Secretary General of the Nordic Governmental Corporation, I'm pleased that the Nordic experience uh, when it comes to working with culture and diplomacy, have this broad outreach and attention. I hope you will not be disappointed. At the outset of this conference, one might ask, why is a conference on cultural diplomacy uh, important? Uh, or as our uh, uh, moderator said, why are you here? Mm -hmm. The simple answer, in a way, in my view, is our need to develop understanding in the field of uh, or, or we're talking about, not to miss out on the huge potential of culture and its contributions in developing a better world. First of all, and maybe the most basic, understanding different aspects of culture is key to mutual understanding so often missing in the world today. It seems to me that we live in a day and age where these factors are of increasing importance to build peace and stability, no matter where in the world we live. It has been said that cultural diplomacy reveals the soul of a nation. I believe that cultural diplomacy can be used to strengthen these values, and I believe that it should be at the core of every nation's soul. Culture may sometimes be seen as a part of the problem. We're here to reveal that it is a part of the solution. Furthermore, culture is increasingly seen as means to achieving more value-oriented objectives, such as promotion of democracy, human rights, and freedom of expression. Values which are under a lot of pressure in many parts of the world. This is because at the core of any cultural expression is exactly that freedom. So cultural expressions <clears throat> may not always be pleasant and nice for those in power. All of us who've been in some sort of a position have uh, an experience of that. Uh, my personal experience, one of them, uh, are I can recall quite a few character uh, character uh, drawings from newspapers in, uh, from my time as a cabinet minister. I didn't like them. I thought some of them were really ugly, some were nasty, but I did and I do appreciate the artist's right to express his opinion about me, about politics, through his art. That's the core of the cultural freedom of expression. Now turning to more specific common Nordic experiences. The Nordic countries have a long tradition uh, of using culture and cultural diplomacy when relations between countries are to be developed, both in our own inter-Nordic cooperation, as Marianne Hjelved and, and Morgan Slyketoft uh, just talked about, and in our relationship with neighbors in other parts of the world. For instance, the Nordic countries have actively supported democratic reforms in the Baltic states, in Russia and Belarus, since the fall of the Berlin Wall. This support has been and is expressed in a broad popular advocacy and also in the mobilization of cultural, non-governmental organizations, institutions, grassroots and the political spectrum. An important part of the work is done through our offices in Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia and Russia. A very concrete example is our support for the Belarusian University in Exile, European Humanities University in Vilnius, uh, Lithuania. A strong cultural foundation and development is uh, of the core aspects of uh, the Nordic <coughs> cooperation. In fact, ministers and parliamentarians are highly engaged uh, in and committed to our cultural cooperation. Culture is the second largest budget line in the Nordic uh, organized uh, cooperation. And the cultural awareness of our common Nordic values and heritage are strong among our citizens. This is, at the bottom line, very, very positive. 
because our common cultural heritage binds us together. It's the glue, as Marianne Hjelved phrased it. And it plays an important role as a driver for the development also of sustainable societies in the wide sense of the word. This line of thinking also impacts our cooperation with our Baltic neighbors. In, in our regional cooperation, I think what we're actually doing, to sum it up in, in a very brief sentence, I would say we are uh, <coughs> making use of the added value of proximity. The added value of proximity. Proximity is not only about geography, it's that too. Proximity is about history, it's about culture, and it's about social uh, systems, social traditions. And to make, in the re on a regional basis, use of this added value of proximity, I think that is what regional cooperation is all about. Uh, last year, the Nordic Council of Ministers in, uh, initiated the flagship project Culture for Sustainable Development in the Baltic Sea region. The overall purpose of this project is to build knowledge on culture as a driver for sustainable development and encourage the multiplication of good practices for culture and sustainability in the Baltic Sea region. I believe that awareness of the importance of cultural diplomacy is growing. Earlier this year, the Ministers for Nordic Cooperation agreed on a vision statement for the future Nordic cooperation, which amongst other focus on the visibility and international involvement of the region. This focus is in part a response to the steep increase in demand for Nordic experiences, which we have seen over the last years. In the Secretariat of the Nordic Council of Ministers, where I have my daily uh, service, we have see every day uh, uh, questions, requests for the Nordic uh, model, the Nordic experience, the Nordic values from the outside world. It's ever increasing demand. Uh, and we have seen over the last years also an interest in uh, thematic uh, involvements like green growth, sustainable practices, welfare issues, creative industries, food culture, literature, and so on. Last year, as was mentioned, uh, we had a new kind of Nordic international initiative in Washington, D.C. at the Kennedy Center, a major Nordic cultural festival called Nordic Cool. <laughs> Together with a wide range of national and international players, we succeeded in reaching a very large audience with Nordic values through a variety of cultural platforms, art, fashion, architecture, music, and food. And the festival was, uh, um, medial and in political terms, a major success. More than 700 Nordic artists of all these kinds were participating. Building on this success, we have now initiated the development of a strategy for international profiling and positioning of the Nordic region. The goal is not to, bra to do brand management uh, in the traditional or one may say old fashioned way, but to systemize our branding re related activities in a strategic manner. Naturally, branding the Nordic region is only relevant seen that there is something to brand. This brings us back to the statement that cultural diplomacy reveals a nation's soul. I believe that core Nordic values such as democracy, human rights, sustainability, equality, and solidarity are some of the key features of the Nordic soul. Or, as the renowned branding expert Simon Anhol summarized it as at the ministers' meeting this summer in Iceland, at the core of the Nordic brand is doing good. Doing good. We see these values expressed in a variety of cultural expressions. Nordic food, uh, movies, literature, design, architecture, and fashion which can be used to share these values with our neighbors and partners in other parts of the world. I hope each of you will be able to experience for yourself some of these expressions of Nordic values and while staying here in Copenhagen. And before ending, let me share with you a, a personal anecdote, uh, why I believe in uh, cultural diplomacy. Uh, <clears throat> on my watch as the president of our parliamentary assembly, the Nordic Council, I was keen to establish an inter-parliamentary Nordic-Baltic dialogue with the Belarusian politicians, including those in the Belarusian parliament, which is part of the system, and those opposition leaders outside of parliament. That was not an easy task. Uh, approaching the speaker of the Belarusian parliament with this rather challenging uh, request, I had read his CV and learned that his passion was handball. 
and uh, he was even the president of the National Handball Association. So, I mobilized all my limited knowledge about handball and initiated our discussion about the importance of the handball arena as a place where people meet despite differences and respect each other and have some games of the rule, uh, rules of the game and, and have an opportunity to encounter even if one is different. Well, you can imagine the discussion went so well. It just flowed out of that. And when I came to my request, could we bring Nordic Baltic parliamentarians together with opposition leaders and parliamentarians from Belarus to have a dialogue? He said, yes. He wanted that kind of uh, an arena where we could meet despite differences. And I hope, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that this arena will be such an arena where we can meet and learn from each other despite differences. Maybe it's exactly the differences that make us learn.